Hello, this is Dr. Flight. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, this is going to be a video that we uh, spend a little bit of time talking about market-based exchanges. If you recall, there are five core aspects of marketing. And um, the earlier video walked through the first three. Um, this video walks through something called market based exchanges. So um, in a market economy, um, one of the key concepts is this idea that buyers and sellers can freely come together um, and they can choose um, to do business. And so that's what a market-based economy is largely um, based on. And that's what we'll talk about here a little bit. And, and one of the reasons why we talk about it is this is one of the um, core purposes of marketing. Um, marketing and the people who perform marketing activities um, largely are focused on bringing buyers and sellers together so that an exchange can, can take place. And so um, in the big picture, um, kind of socially, if an exchange is unable to take place, then it's hard for people to meet uh, to satisfy their un, unmet needs and wants and and things like that. So there's a whole bunch of um, mechanisms, economic mechanisms that happen as a result of an exchange, and so um, it's vitally important that exchanges happen. And so um, so this is like a big concept that drives some of the marketing um, motivation for people to to go into marketing and such. So we're going to have a model here um, where uh, we have buyers and sellers together. So we can first think about um, the sellers. Um, and honestly, you can start with either side, the left or the right. But if we start with sellers, think about these are people as organizations or people who create value. They create products, they create services. Um, if you think of the product P of the four P's, this would be um, one where we're developing new, new ways to satisfy customers' needs and wants, and we're creating products, services, ideas, concepts, you know, the whole, the whole idea of creating value is um, creating something that others will want to have or, or they'll, they'll find desirable. On the other side, we have consumers or customers, um, and these are the buyers. Now, if we have customers um, who uh, are in the marketplace, we typically define or describe them by their need or want. So if we have customers who have a desire to um, have fashion forward clothing, um, that's a very specific type of buyer. They have very specific needs and wants. And the value we create should be positioned and designed and, and, and uh, created to, to the specifications of that marketplace or of that specific consumer. But the buyers come to the marketplace with needs and wants, and um, they need to satisfy them. And they understand that if they're going to receive a benefit, they're going to have to pay for that. There's going to be a cost associated with it. So we think of them also as buyers, right? So a um, market can't happen with at least two or more parties. That's a rule that we have. Um, oftentimes, we think of them as the buyers and the sellers. Um, but also remember, in a marketplace, we have more than one seller. We'll have lots of sellers or um, organizations with products to sell, and we'll have lots of buyers too. We're not just going to have one buyer. We're going to have lots of buyers who come to the marketplace to make to make an exchange, right? So we bring our value. Um, we communicate our value. Uh, we uh, want to express our value to the marketplace. We do this by advertising and distribution. Uh, we get our product out there. Um, we also, within this con construct here, um, uh, set a price or capture the value in pricing um, that the product or the, that we've created, the service that we've created has. Um, so money and information from the customer then comes to the comes to the seller. So the customer receives value that has been delivered and communicated to them. 
Um, that's then they define the value as the benefits that they receive, which then satisfy their need and want. The seller receives money and information from the from the customer. So that's the exchange that's happening. Um, the exchange, the, the customer's getting something and the seller's getting something. And this exchange is like they agree that they'll they'll trade each other for for this for these for these elements, right? Um, so this is kind of the basis of 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 a an exchange. Buyers receive an object, service, or an idea that satisfies a need or that they have. The seller in the exchange receives something which they perceive as equivalent in value, or that there's a perception of equality here. Um, so so again, this is kind of this this concept of buying and selling. And if you were to like think about the role that the marketer plays um, in society and kind of in a broader sense um, in business and in marketing, our goal is to bring buyers and sellers together so that the exchange can take place. Um, this could be in a mall, this could be online, this could be in some type of, a, a, again, just a generic marketplace that we have. Um, but this is a big role that marketers play that our job or marketers roles or jobs is to um, aid in creating the exchange and facilitating the exchange from, in order to take place. Um, so making it happen. Um, uh, when people actually buy and sell, then, then that's, that's, that's a successful market-based activity um, that marketers have produced, that marketers have played a role in creating. Okay, and, and honestly, if you look at the functions across the business, you have management. Now, management folks could very easily play a strong role in, in creating an exchange finance, accounting, information systems, operations, you know, all these other roles as well. Marketers are the best suited and the most um, focused on the exchange um, out of any of the other functions. It's just what marketers, what marketers do. And keep in mind that exchanges can take all different types of shapes and sizes, and they don't have to be um, look a certain way. The modern marketplace, they take many different forms from a modern, modern perspective, traditional malls, uh, traditional retail stores that are brick and mortar, internet retailers, internet marketplaces, apps, things like that, all are areas or opportunities for a market or an exchange to take place. I have an illustration here of Amazon books. Um, Amazon, is you know we think of them as solely an online uh, digital environment to produce a, an exchange, um, but they might also have a brick and mortar location, like a physical retail store as well, and that was place where an exchange could take place. Amazon has um, retail stores, like in malls, you can go to an Amazon store. Um, and you can pick up things there. Amazon also has locations where you can pick up products that have been purchased online, like a pickup location. So think of like this blend then of where these marketing and exchange activities can take place. And in a modern sense, it can be sort of in any environment um, and a mix of environments typically um, where Buyers can receive value and sellers can receive compensation for their value. Um, now, this isn't always the way it's been. Um, here's just another illustration of a lifestyle outdoor mall. We have apps as well, as I've mentioned. The next photo here, though, illustrates a market that is uh, it's in function today. It's uh, This happens to be um, the main market or souk uh, that's located in Erbil, Iraq, um, where people come to exchange their uh, products, but also, you know, sell, sell their products in an open air market. Um, and this is something that is uh, something that happens all over the world. Um, so it's certainly um, not what we in the far west here might consider um, a 
typical mall, but we still have opportunities like this in farmers markets um, every week uh, here in a, in a Western economy where people come with their, with their products and they look to exchange those products um, for, for um, you know, for, for compensation. Okay, so um, again, the concept of the marketplace um, can take many different forms, but what happens at the marketplace is the same. And so there are some fundamental uh, requirements then for exchange to happen. And there's gonna be five of these, which you need to remember. So take a moment, pause the video if you need to, write these down, consult your textbook, but memorize them. Okay, number one is at least two or more parties are required for an exchange to take place, right? Which that's something I mentioned earlier. Okay, there has to be a desire and ability. So not only a desire, and the ability, those two things, for each party to satisfy the other party's needs, okay? Uh, number three, there has to be communication between parties. So the buyers and the sellers have to be able to communicate with each other, all right? That's a requirement that has to happen. Each party, um, this, the last two are a little bit more esoteric, but uh, they, they apply. The, the, each party should feel have the impression that they will be better off after the exchange than before the exchange. So in other words, the value that they're receiving should um, exceed their current state um, of whatever that state is um, by, by virtue of making the exchange happen. Okay, um, so you might not know this prior to your exchange, but you have to be at least convinced that this is going to take place. And if you're not better off after the exchange, then in a market-based economy, you won't make that exchange again. So it's in the seller's benefit to really make sure the customer is satisfied. If not, the customer will go to somebody else, right? Because they're not better off after the exchange if they're not satisfied. Okay, the last one is each party needs to be free to reject offers from the other party or parties okay so remember there's more sellers and more buyers than just one there's multiple buyers multiple sellers so in a market-based economy um, if a buyer is not happy with a proposed offer they can reject it and they can either not satisfy their need or want or they could go to another seller same thing with the flipped around if the seller doesn't agree to the terms that the buyer offers, they could go find another buyer or they could just simply not sell their product, right? But they have to be free or have the opportunity to reject offers that, that are in, in the marketplace. Okay, so wrapping this up, um, thinking about what we um, you know just kind of described and in studying, remember these questions that you see summarize the concepts but they also offer a study guide and they also offer a glimpse into the questions you'll see on exams. Okay, so study these, practice these, okay? So number one, be able to describe a marketplace, kind of its role and purpose in, in business. Be able to list um, and know the five requirements for an exchange to take place, which we just talked about, okay? Um, also, um, internalize, I guess, this idea that the role of marketing is to bring buyers and sellers together. Together, That's kind of one of the key things that we do. And by doing so, we create and we facilitate sales and purchases through the exchanges of value. Okay, so just again, this is a good summary statement to memorize, to remember, to internalize. Like, what do marketers do? What's the role of marketers? Why do marketers even exist? Well, marketers bring buyers and sellers together, and that's what the role of an exchange is. Um, and by doing so, we create and facilitate sales and purchases, transactions, if you will, through the exchange of value. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions, and um, thank you for listening.